So we are here uh, with Joshua Kassoon. He's a newer agent on our squad here um, out of the Jacksonville uh, compound. Let's kind of hear a little bit about where you're from. I, the story is insane. I'm like, absolutely love it. But let's just start off where you're originally from, work our way down. So yeah, hit me sure. with it. So, yeah, I was born in South Carolina. Um, my dad is a career Marine Corps man. Mm -hmm. So we moved around a lot. You know, I didn't spend too much time there as a child. Um, you know, fast forward a lot of years, joined the Air Force myself. Okay. Got stationed out in Offutt, Nebraska. Awesome. Thank uh, you for, for your a couple service. Years. Yes, sir. Of course. It was my pleasure. Um, you know, while I was in, I did industrial hygiene, occupational health, that kind mm -hmm. of thing. We had a piece of um, emergency response as well. Okay. So that was a great experience. You know, I really liked it uh, as a stepping stone. Mm -hmm. Never intended to stay in the Air Force for a full career. So when I got out, you know, my dad actually, it coincided with my dad's retirement. He moved down here to Florida. I was staying up in Nebraska, and when the lease was up on my apartment, I said, hey, <laughs> you, you guys are living in the, you know, the grand life of Florida, sunny all year. Yeah. So I had to come down. Perfect. Came down, um, and within a week or two, I found a job uh, doing crime scene restoration. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so definitely a, a unique way to, <laughs> to spin things, but, you know, it's a great opportunity. And I saw it as another way to continue serving my community. Right. You know, continuing to affect people in, in positive ways. Right. And that was definitely a... A good lane that I, I found myself in. Right, right. Um, you know, at the end of the day, unfortunately, it is a sales position. Right. So I had to go into people's homes after they've lost a loved one, you know, a mother, a child, who, right. or what have you. And I had to go sell my cleaning services. Not only sell them, but then actually conduct the cleaning. Oh, my yeah. gosh. Yeah. That's wild. So you're going into these people's, right, crime scene restoration, <laughs> which is not a part of a government service. It is a private it, thing. It is a private. Uh, fortunately, it's usually covered by homeowners insurances. But either way, anything like, that's left over is really your responsibility as a homeowner. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So in this very <laughs> unique sales position, <laughs> um, not something you come across every day. Definitely not. Um, you decided like, okay, sales, I'm decent at sales. Right. I can talk to people. I have good re relationship building. How can I impact them more positively than what I'm currently exactly. doing. And that's exactly what I was thinking while I was in that job. You know, it's as much as I enjoyed helping people in that tangible way, it was not very financially profitable for me, not very sustainable over a whole career. Right. And I was thinking about it, you know, more and more and exactly how can I help people in a, such a positive way and also benefit myself financially, emotionally, you know, a little bit more stability in my right. life. And that's how I kind of found real estate, you know, um, if I can uh, help you with their death situation, right. I can definitely help them with life in terms right. of selling a house, <laughs> starting a new, you know, yeah, new chapter. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. that is, uh, that's interesting. But it wasn't just like a snap of the fingers and you're here because we had like a little bit of hiccup. So originally you are one of our scholarship recipients. We had a scholarship program. We've actually, I think Reese was one, Courtney was one I've had on already, um, yeah, I think it was a great program. Mm -hmm. Obviously, like you're just giving opportunity to people who want the opportunity, which is what our main objective is, right? It's just create right. the best opportunity for someone and it's however they deal with it. So obviously, you took full advantage of that. But scholarship recipient, but it took a little while to get you here because we had some DBPR hang up did, and this, course. that, and the well, other. Always some paperwork to Always to get paperwork, overcome. right. And I remember actually, so we had a couple events. Um, like an Ask a Top Agent Anything panel, and I actually remember you being there. I did, yeah. It was actually uh, me and Tiffany, I believe, were the only ones here. Yeah. Um, yeah, you know, great. I always want to meet agents. You know, get yeah. to talk to management before you start a new job. Yeah. You kind of interview the interviewer. Right, exactly, and really get to hear it from the horse's mouth in, the, in this exactly. case. Yeah, exactly. because you, right when you got here, it was not – I want to say right when you got here. I mean, like, how long are you here now? Uh, so I'm going into my third month here pretty soon. My first official day was October 6th. Okay. Yes, sir. So we're going into our third in January, but you didn't have – so one of my favorite things to kind of like ask is like when you open up your pizza shop and you mm -hmm. put that, that first dollar up on the wall, you didn't immediately have this just like off to the gates. No, definitely not. Um, you know, as, as hard as I was trying, right. the learning curve is steep. Um, so I didn't execute until um, – well into my 40th day. Um, so it's a whole month of really learning the process. 
accepting the formula that is given to me. Right. And and just working the system as hard as possible. And eventually something falls in your lap. Right. Um, Which something has fallen in your lap. Exactly, because yeah. So I've got the, the game ball here. Right. I really call it the team ball. The team you know, ball. I know referred to it as game ball. Right. But to me, this represents really following the team atmosphere mm-hmm. and really engulfing myself in the you know, in the the personalities of everyone in the office mm-hmm. and the culture of the office. Yeah. And doing those things directly, relying on my teammates, my teammates relying on me, making right. sure we're all successful at the end of the day. Right, exactly. You know, yeah, so sure, yeah. you are the December and first recipient of the game ball. What we started doing is handing out, just like in any locker room scenario, um, handing out a game ball to a agent that, it's not always the most successful agent. It's, not, it's, it's an agent that has shown the qualities of perseverance, hard work, dedication, and just does not deviate from what they know is what's right. So in this case, you had your 30-day review. I did. Um, and it was not – not that it wasn't good. It's just you're like, hey, like, I don't know why I'm doing, like, X, Y, and Z. Here are my problems. And I remember Brett even discussing it and saying, like, hey, like, these are things we can actually help with. And they set a goal for you. So let's let's kind of like outline that process. 30-day review, yeah. what, what was the goal, and what were some of those kind of like objections, hiccups, things you were dealing with? For sure. So I think a large part that, that people need to realize, especially as newer agents, is that you have to continue following a process even if you're not seeing the results immediately. Sure. You know, everyone likes to give me the analogy of popcorn popping. You know, you keep adding heat to this popcorn, and eventually one pops, and then they continue to pop, and right. all of a sudden you have a whole bag of popcorn, right? That is you know, perfect. So I we love go into that. my 30 day review, um, and I'm not feeling too confident. Nothing's really happening yet. I'm adding heat to my popcorn, but I haven't seen any popcorn pop yet. Right. So my question is hey, well, how do I sustain this heat? How do I increase my heat? Right. And it's simple, you know, continuing to work the system, continuing to follow up with me. Right, right. And eventually, you know, you build confidence every conversation you have, mm-hmm. you build a little more confidence every appointment you have. And all those things culminate into eventually executing a deal. Right. So, you know, not only maybe a week after my 30-day review, I hit twice in one day, executed twice in a day. But and what then, was the overall yeah. goal? So remember, I remember him saying they set a goal and they were like, all right, what this this amount by this. Yeah. So my goal um, as of 8 November was to execute 5 by 8 December. Okay. Um, and I hit 4 by, by 8 December. And I just closed 2 this week. So my first two closings. So you had your first two closings already. Correct. So now we're pretty much back to that question of open your pizza joint, first dollar up on the wall. Mm -hmm. You're here just shy of three months, and you've had your two closings, and you're you're on your way. But, I mean, I think it's great, too, because we have agents that have just immediate success. So I just had um, Lawrence on here at the St. Augustine office. He joined in April, and he's got 24 closed homes. But like never, like just you get here in the spring and just like took off, right? right. So you joined here in such a, you know, this kind of like we call it a little bit of a lull. Obviously, people are always buying and selling real estate, but it's just kind of like it's not as hot as maybe the spring market. So to persevere through that and not immediately see those results and just really inflate mm-hmm. kind of your ego and be like, yes, this is like everything I'm doing. You had to convince yourself. Right. And that to me it ties back to the whole team ball concept. Right. I can rely so much on my teammates. The you have such a bond and such a shared experience. Mm-hmm. With, you know, everyone goes through the same exact things. If you're a seasoned agent, you've gone through it. Right. If you're one of the teammates that started around the time I did or after me, we're going through it together. Yes. And that bonding and being able to rely on each other is really what sets the DJ Lindsay team apart from, from everybody else. I think. Yeah. I mean, and you guys actually have a really great click over there. Um, it's like you, Tommy Scott, Brylam is over there. Yeah. Like, you guys have a, a quality crew over there. For sure. Um, of people who all joined around the same time and same thing, right? You're like, I was just like listening on other conversations. Hey, what can I do better? You guys are always so hungry. Um, not that anybody in the office isn't, but it's just, you guys, I just, I've noticed that, especially like being over there, you kind of like, you get a little different atmosphere. You guys bring a little fire, um, because I mean, that's what it is here, right? It's, it's the culture here. So what are you looking forward to going into 2022? Like, let's, let's talk full year goals. Yeah. What, what does that look like? For sure. So I actually just sat down with Brett yesterday. You know, I see Brett as one of my good mentors here yeah. um, at, at the team. And I just gave him a, a very hardcore list of things that I would like to achieve uh, awesome. by next year. So my goal is 48 houses closed, um, you know, the, the four a month average. Yeah. It uh, definitely takes a lot of work, a lot of conversations per day. You know, mm-hmm. it's very formulaic. We have it, the, yeah. plan, the plan laid out here. 
So it's really just following it, executing it to the T. Right. So 48 is my is my goal. I love that. Um, I also told Brett I would like to be in the top 10 performers each month, at least three months of the year. Right. So that's once per quarter. Yeah. Definitely I dig doable. that. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. Those are really great goals. Definitely, I mean, definitely achievable. For I mean, sure. That's like, if anything, I would say, like, you should aim higher. Exactly. But, yeah, no, I think at 48 homes, that's a very respectable mark. I mean, we talk about it all the time, like, a good agent – on a good year, we'll sell 12 to 15 homes. Right. So 48, you know, year two, it, well, year one, I guess, um, yeah, it's just going to be bananas. Yeah, and, you know, it's, it's interesting that I've, I've upped it to that number. My very first day on October 6th, I was like, you know what, if I can get two by the end of December, I've done I've done a great job. Right. And I've got four. Four. I've got four, doubled you, it, and yeah. I'm looking to have, you know, a couple more this weekend, potentially. Yeah, <laughs> right, exactly. I mean, that's a, you're always here. You're always on the phones. I see you always grabbing appointments or shifts. Anytime somebody, you know, drops one, hey, I need this covered, you're, you're definitely one of those guys. So it's, it's just a matter of time. And obviously, being in this holiday season, it's, you know, it, it's definitely difficult. Right. People have put their search on hold or whatever <laughs> it is. You know, you get all these objections all the time. Um Hit me with some other goals. You you gonna do like? Are you a new car guy? Are you like I want to buy yeah. property? Like so, where are you at? Uh, both actually. Um, yeah. So so this this coming year, I'm looking to at least pay off my car. Yeah. Do a little bit of aftermarket work on it. Customize it a little bit. Yeah, no doubt. And Love then uh, you know me and my family are both looking for a new place. Perfect. Um, you know we've got a, a lot of stuff in storage that has to come through the military here oh, in February. Oh right. So first quarter, we're expecting to purchase on our home as well. That's super exciting. Yeah. And it's great. It's really coinciding. I got my license, and now all of a sudden my family's looking to move. And I can be able to help them in that way. Yeah, yeah. that's a, well. I mean, can't really hate it. Once the once the world figured out that you could work remote, and now jobs started to like right. shift a little bit. Everyone's like, well, why am I going to work remote in Nebraska? Why am I exactly. going to work remote? So I, be, I mean, I'm me from New Jersey. You know, my family is we have a, a home down here, but the same thing. Like my parents are like, kind of ready for it, right. right? Just ready to just pack up and head out. Yeah, and the you know with the way the rental market is here in Florida. If you can afford a mortgage, it's it's be- always better to have some equity in something. Yeah, it's funny. I just saw, <laughs> I actually just saw. Do you know who Dave Ramsey is? He's like, yeah, a, okay, I do. yeah. So he just posted on Facebook, and in my head, I'm kind of like, it was very on point for Dave Ramsey. Dave Ramsey, for those who don't know, is a financial advisor, right, right. so to speak, yeah, yeah. who kind of has a similar segment like this. Um, posted on Facebook, and again, it was on par for the way he says things. But I just, I was like, this seems risky. Was how. You shouldn't buy a home unless you're ready because of the financial commitment. And the rest of the thread was just an absolute takedown oh, of it's so much more affordable to buy a home than rent now. Like rent's so inflated. Rent's right. crazy this. Like this is the worst advice I heard. Like if I followed this 12 years ago, I'd probably still be in debt. And so like it was a dude, it was nuts. I like wanted to screenshot it. I wound up sending it to somebody on our team who mm-hmm. said their father's like in love with Dave Ramsey. And as I'm reading this, I'm like, they must have known that this was, like, anybody can look at the numbers and just see, and like, just right, like, yeah. my, my rent compared to my, and when I say rent, it's my mortgage is what, half of what, like, a normal, respectable rent of something half the size of my house exactly. is. It's, like, wild. So I'm like, was this, like, a ploy to just get, like, insane engagement and just, like, churn a discussion? Yeah. But that being said, it was, like, totally in the bad light of like against his opinion i don't know it was wild but that's immediately stuck out to me too is just like it is so much more affordable to it is. buy a house and i think that's why the real estate market too is also booming is because when the interest rates fell and people started to see this opportunity i think it just became a general consensus of like well, why was it so high in the first place right. and we were having people like right the 2008 collapse was founded on people who had no income verification none of that were just buying 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 mm-hmm. and then when the adjustable rate kicked in it was like stupid right and then they're like oh, well i owe more on this house than it's ever worth like i'll just leave mm-hmm. and the bank was like well i don't want a house either <laughs> and all of a sudden yeah it's just stuck without the house right so, but now it's not founded on that it's people who actually can afford the home because they can afford the homes so they're like exactly. oh why not right mm-hmm. i mean who doesn't want to be a homeowner customize your own house and not have to worry about like oh there's a hole in the wall or whatever it's like right right no, it's, yeah always worth to have that equity if you can um, right exactly yeah, the, the mm-hmm. other thing i'm seeing with a lot of people is I don't know if it's a commitment problem that they have, but mm-hmm. well, some people see a home ownership as, as a leash, and it's really not a leash. It, it's it's freedom. Right. It's the exact opposite. You can right. do, you know if you're not living in it, you could rent it out here in Florida. That's always great. 
Absolutely. You know, put it back on the market for a profit. There's, you have so many options available to you that you don't just living in an apartment. Right. And being in Jacksonville, you know, with the military presence we have here, right. it is very easy to grab rentals, whether it's long term or not. Exactly. Right. Um, it, it's it's super easy to, to do that. And even just Air, I mean, Airbnb, like sometimes you buy your forever home. And it's a great location. You vet it, whatever. And then you just for whatever reason, you're just like, hey, this isn't for me. If you're in a great spot, like Airbnb is so great it now. Is. Yeah, like, great. I mean, it's it's crazy to think that you can just turn something over and not have to forfeit it and just constantly building your portfolio. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah, you yeah. have to see home ownership as not only investments, but as assets, you know, right. appreciating assets mm-hmm. at that. Not just, a, oh, it's a structure that I own. Right. It's definitely something, you know, everyone says money that's not working for you is, is lost money. Right. It's the same thing with your house. Right. You know, if, if you have it, you might as well let it work for you. Exactly. No, I mean, we have, we know stories of just people, our own agents, you know, that are making like 4000 in monthly passive income just from owning property. Right. I mean, I know that Theo is big. Obviously, he's a great real estate agent itself, but he too is now like very big in uh, real estate investing, mm-hmm. owning property, et cetera, because, yeah, I mean, you just believe in it. At yeah, exactly. Point. You know, the worst thing you can do is tell everyone, oh, now is the best time to buy, and then you not do it yourself. Right. I, I'm i going to take my own advice at the end of the day. You have to. You have to. You literally, take take you, advantage of the market that you're in. Exactly. You literally have to. Well, dude, you are absolutely awesome. Um, we're so stoked for you, especially because of kind of your entrance here. It was like, just, you know, not off to a hot start. Right. You just said, hey, no, this is for me. I'm making it work, yeah. and mm-hmm. turned it around literally like that. Yeah. And part of it is, you know, like back to the whole DBPI struggle. I waited so long to get here to be part of this team. Yes. And the, from day one, I told myself, hey, I'm, I'm in it until they kick me out. Well, it's just, and that's it. It's like, we never want to do that. Like, obviously, sometimes we draw the line. It's like, hey, this doesn't make sense for you. Sure. Right? Sure. Like, why are you, dra- you know, but someone like you that's working so hard, that wants to be here, wants to be involved, we are going to push you and pull exactly. you along to get you to where you want. Um, and that's it. It took forever for you to get here, for you to just give up on that now and just be exactly. like, yep, it doesn't work. Right. Like, there's 90 other people in the company who it does work for. It's not working for me. Right? Like, it's just not happening. No, it's definitely like, not. You and, you know, and even the day that Brett gave me this ball, the very first thing I thought when he gave it to me was, wow, I need to work harder. Yeah. I, need, I need to live up to the expectations that's right. been put upon me. It makes you hungrier. It does. It does. You know, as, as much as it represents the success that I have had, mm-hmm. it also represents – the obligations out of my teammates, not to let them down, right. to continue giving it my all every day, not, right. to, not to let off the pressure at all. Absolutely. Well, yes, dude, sir. again, I appreciate you coming on, telling your story. Thank we you. are absolutely stoked to have you. You're a great asset here. And keep rocking that thing. I get, well, you get to keep it for the rest of the month. The rest and then, of the month, yeah, and then we'll pass it off to the next uh, worthy teammate. Right, exactly. Yes, awesome, man. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate Thanks, it. Right? I really appreciate you having me. See ya.